So this question comes from Connor, and his email reads, What's a Christian supposed to think of firearms? I use myself as an example. I have several vintage weapons and enjoy looking at them and using them at the range. I enjoy the sights, sounds, and even the smell, gunpowder, etc. I have told myself, as well as God through prayer, that I would try to keep this from ever becoming an idol. Rather, it is a hobby that I enjoy, and it will remain as such, in comparison to the scripture in my walk in faith. Is this okay? Can a Christian be a firearms enthusiast? So thank you, Connor, for your email. So if you're asking what my personal opinion is on guns, well, personally, I have chosen as a single man without a wife or children to not own a firearm. But if the Lord were to change my circumstance and I was given a wife and a child, I would own a firearm. Okay? I do believe that the Bible does support the idea that a true believer be able to defend themselves, and rightfully so. John 18, Peter had a sword. Okay? And we see that the Lord declared that it was a good thing that they carried swords for self-defense purposes. We find this in Luke 22. Now, guns, like anything else, can become an idol. And you need to be very careful about this. Okay, I've seen YouTube channels where guys, you know, this guy is walking around his house and he's literally got 500 guns scattered all over his home, on the floors, the couches. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> this one guy had a 50 caliber turret machine gun sitting at his bedroom window so that he could protect his home against invaders. See, a lot of this is rooted in a lack of faith and not trusting God. Okay, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Do you really believe that as a Christian? Because at the end of the day, a gun is not going to save your life. Okay, It's the Lord that determines that. Now, I used to watch this TV show called The First 48. And it was interesting because many of the times when the police would show up on the crime scene, you know, in some inner city neighborhood, a lot of the times the guy that got killed, his gun would be sitting right next to him or he'd be in his pocket hanging out. It didn't matter that he had a weapon. Okay, Because when the Lord requires your soul, you're going. I don't care if you've got a whole army, okay? And on the other end of that, you're invincible until it's your time. Now, again, I'm not against guns. All I'm saying is that a lot of the idolatry surrounding guns is rooted in a lack of unbelief. Also, really quickly, I wanted to touch on the difference between murder and killing, because there is a difference. Now, John Piper has an interesting take on guns. He has chosen not to own a gun for home defense, because as he puts it, he would rather die than to kill an unsaved intruder who would be sent to hell if he shot him dead. Now, me personally, I believe both perspectives are right, okay? The man of God who chooses not to arm himself and to trust the Lord, and on the other end, the man of God who arms himself to protect his family. I believe both can be right and just in the Lord's eyes. But to those who do choose to arm themselves as Christians, there needs to be a level of grace, okay? I remember watching a Christian YouTube video about self-defense, and in the comments, some of the commenters who called themselves Christians were saying things like, yeah, if somebody breaks in my house, I'm going to empty the whole clip in their chest or I'm going to take their head off of my shotgun, things like that. So even when we are defending our homes as Christians, there should always be a sense of grace that speaks to the fact that this intruder is made in the image of God. OK, now, a lot of these guys that are quick to want to kill someone that speaks to the nature of their heart. That's what it does. So be very careful because you may think it's home. It's self-defense, but the prosecution would call it murder. Now, there are a lot of men in prison right now because they killed someone who was invading their home. So as Christians who are gun owners, it is your right to legally own a gun. It is also your right to defend the life of you and yours. But as Christians, in the same manner that we should be slow to anger, we should be slow to kill. Next question. You recently said you wished people wouldn't buy a gun with their economic stimulus checks. This sounded to some like you're a strict pacifist who'd rather avoid confrontation with an intruder than protect his family. Would you respond to this? Well, I knew when I said that, that that's what people would think, and I chose not to answer that question. Um, but I will say something about it now. The context was, get it back in my head, um, that the missionaries in 1956 who were martyred in Ecuador, Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, Ed McCulley, Roger Udarian. I'm going to leave one out, and that's terrible. Pete something. You know who I'm talking about. They were all speared to death, and uh, they had guns. This came out through research, and uh, I saw it in the, in the documentary, and they shot them in the air. 
as the spears were going through their chests. They could have saved their lives just like that. Just shoot like this. And they didn't. And uh, our Supreme Court just declared that the, which is a Second Amendment, one of the amendments, uh, with the right to bear arms includes not just the right of a militia to bear arms, but the right of a person to have a firearm in his house. And as I contemplated those two events, watching this video of the missionaries and that new decision of the Supreme Court, probably any given intruder into my house, oh, oh, I left out the key thing. The reason they shot in the air is that they said earlier, they had made this comment, that we're ready to go to heaven and these natives are not. So why would we kill them rather than being killed? So I thought, if somebody enters my house as a thief, he probably is not ready to go to heaven either. So, and then I just ended the blog. I hope you don't take your economic stimulus money and buy a firearm. I've never had one, never owned a firearm, had a pellet rifle when I was little and I killed squirrels and I'm sort of ashamed of the way I killed squirrels because I didn't eat them and didn't do anything with them. I just felt it was cool. And I think that's a very wholesome thing. Um, no, I'm not a pacifist. I'm not a pacifist principally. I, I would, I'm not a pacifist act, actively. So somebody asked me, so would you protect your daughter if you had a gun? And I wrote back to Abraham, one word answer, probably. <laughs> Meaning the circumstances are so unpredictable. What would you do? Would you shoot the guy in the head, shoot the guy in the chest, shoot the guy in the leg, or throw the gun at him, or hit him over the head with it? Or, of course I'm going to protect my daughter, but I'm not aiming to kill anybody, especially an intruder who doesn't know Christ and would go straight to hell, probably. Why would I want to do that if I could avoid it? So, no, I'm not a pacifist. I'm not a pacifist. I believe there should be a militia. I believe there should be policemen with billy clubs and guns. They should take out guys that are killing people. And I believe in the military to protect a land from aggression. And I believe that fathers should protect their children, even using force. But if they can avoid killing somebody, of course they should avoid killing somebody. And having a gun is a good way not to avoid killing somebody. We don't need guns in our house. And I'm not against hunters. Good grief. Don't get on my case. Don't write any letters about Piper doesn't believe you should have bows and arrows and rifles and hunting gear. Of course, that's a fully legitimate thing. And I don't even, I'm not going to get in your face if you have a gun lying in your drawer. I just think it's not very wise. Those who live by the gun will die by the gun.